and go back to sharing this one more time. The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. There are three different classes that may be observing this session. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I will respond as soon as I can. Okay, that's out of the way. Today we'll be reviewing for the first test. That's out of the way. And I got some requests uh, from emails last night and this morning, so I'll be going through those problems here in a minute. The first thing I want to talk about is the piece that's missing that uh, some of you figured out and some of you didn't. And let's just say we have the uh, expression r squared, oops, oh, things are working strangely this morning, equals, let's say, uh, 4. Okay? I assume everybody can see my screen there, r squared equals 4? Yes. Yes? Okay, just making sure. So, 2, wow, that is just weird. It's, it, everything is showing up late. 2 times 2 equals 4, right? But what about negative 2 times negative 2? Doesn't that also equal 4? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, we'll see how that, that fits in with what we're going to do today. And let's see. I am going to close this up and see if by restarting it, things work better. We'll find out here in a minute. No, it's still doing it. Oh, well, it is what it is. Okay, so first of all, I am going to share a problem that was requested. This is problem number, hello? <laughs> this is problem number six from section 14.3. And I'm just going to show people's problems. Nobody knows whose they are because you don't see their name, but this will make it easier for you to see the problem. It says, this is number six, write the first five terms of each geometric sequence with the given properties and then find the specified term. All right, we're told the first term, the common ratio, and we are to find the eighth term. So we know a sub 1 is negative 3. We are to find the first five terms, so we need a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, and a sub 5. And we're also supposed to find the eighth term, a sub 8. And we also know that the common ratio is 1 third. All right, so now that I've gathered all that information, I'm going to go back and share this screen. Since we're looking for a geometric uh, sequence, excuse me, we're going to use the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. All right. Is that, is that the uh, formula for like all the geometric um, sequences? Unless they give you a specific different formula within the problem. Okay, yes. but, yeah. but as a default, that's yes. um, what it is yes. for geometric sequences. Yes, awesome. and this is, this is one that you, you are allowed to have on a note card in front of you during the test. And the other one, while we're at it, I'll just write that other one down a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, which is the, that's the arithmetic sequence, okay? All right, thank you. You bet. I'm going to go ahead and erase that arithmetic one now, or not. Boy, this is just weird what my screen is doing. Ah, come on. Oh, well, we'll just leave it there. Okay. Now let's do this. Let's cross it out. All right. So I know that the first term is negative 3, and I know the common ratio. So the second term, 
would be the first term times the common ratio. What is negative three times one third? Negative one, right? Negative, yeah. oh. negative one, okay. The third term would be negative one times one third, which is? Negative one third. Negative one third. The fourth term would be negative one third times one third, which is? Negative one ninth. The fifth term would be negative one ninth times one third, which is? Negative one twenty seventh. Yeah. Now, I could just go on and find a, find a sub six, a sub seven, and a sub eight, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to just find it directly using the formula. So a sub eight equals a sub one times r to the, oh, but I know what r is, don't I? Yeah, a sub eight, I'm sorry, this is really distracting me. Can you guys see what's happening as I'm writing on the screen? It's making these big long lines. Yeah. It's okay. driving me nuts, probably you too. Sorry about that. a sub eight equals a sub one times r times eight minus one, which is negative three times one third to the seventh power. So I'm gonna to go to my calculator and I'm gonna put in negative three times parentheses one divided by three, close parentheses, raised to the seventh power. Now, when I do that, I get a decimal answer which then I would have to approximate. But I don't want a decimal answer. I want an exact answer as a fraction. So let's look at this again. This would be like negative three times one third to the seventh power, right? But that would be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here. That would be like negative three times one to the seventh power over three to the seventh power, okay? If you have a quotient inside of, or, or well, a quotient as part of the base raised to a power, you attach that exponent outside to both the numerator and the denominator. You following that okay? Yes. So then, and then this negative three is like negative three over one. What's one to the seventh power? One to the seventh power. It's just me. Yeah, it's just one times one times one times one times one times one times one, which is one. Okay, three to the seventh power. Three to the seventh power is two thousand one hundred eighty-seven. However, how did we get that two thousand one hundred eighty-seven? Took three to the seventh power, so I can reduce the negative three over the 2167 and get negative one over, let's see, 2167 divided by three is 729. So my final answer for a sub eight is negative one over 729. All right? Any questions about that? So as you can see on the, no, you can't see the screen, but going back to the web assigned screen. The correct answer is, the, uh, ah, boy, things are just doing great here, is negative three, negative one, negative third, negative one ninth, negative one twenty seventh, and negative one over seven twenty nine. Any questions about that? All right, let's see. Next was number eight. It says, find the specified term of the geometric sequence 
with the following property. I should say properties, whatever. Okay, the first three terms, so a sub one is one third, a sub two is negative four thirds, a sub three is 16 thirds, and we're supposed to find a sub seven. Okay. So I know the first three terms of a geometric sequence, I'm supposed to find the seventh term. And this was number eight, Again, you don't all have the same numbers, so I'm just doing specifically problems that a, a certain person asked for, but year number eight uh, from section 14.3 would be very similar. Okay, so geometric sequence. So I'm gonna use a sub n equals a sub one r to the n minus one power. Okay. Well, I need to find R. Recall, with a geometric sequence, I can find R by taking any term in the sequence divided by the previous term. So let's take A sub 2 divided by A sub 1. Well, a fraction divided by a fraction is equal to the first fraction times the reciprocal of the second fraction. And this comes out to be negative four. So the common ratio is negative four. If you're not sure, let's take a sub three divided by a sub two. 16 thirds divided by negative four thirds, which would be 16 thirds times three over negative four, which again is negative four. So we now know that the common ratio is negative four. Any questions before we go on? All right, so a sub seven is going to be a sub one times the common ratio raised to the seven minus one power, which would be one third times negative four to the sixth power. Now I've got to be careful. I'm the base for the power for the exponent six is negative four. So I have to include all of that negative four in the base, okay? So let's see here. I'm gonna have one third times, so I'm gonna go parentheses, negative four, close parentheses, raised to the sixth power, and I get 4,096. So now I've got 4,096 over three, okay? Now, I know that three doesn't go into 4,096 evenly because I got 4,096 by taking negative four to the sixth power, and three doesn't go into negative four, so multiplying it out, it wouldn't go in either. So my answer, 4,096 over three. Now, some of you discovered that it really likes fractions and WebAssign doesn't tend to like mixed numbers, especially in this case, in this context. So be careful with that. So there's A sub seven. Okay, let's see. Any questions on that before we go on to another problem? Yeah, Mr. Mayo. Yes. Uh, when I did negative four to the sixth power, I got negative. 4,096. Right, that's because you did this instead of, oops, that. Aha, okay. That, you gotta group that, that negative inside, okay? That makes perfect sense, thank you so much. You betcha, all right. Now we're gonna look at number 12 from this particular assignment. And let's see. It says, insert three geometric means, two positive and one negative, between negative 16 and negative 256. So a sub one is negative 16. We are to insert, oh, did I say, let's see here. Yeah, there we go. I accidentally looked at the wrong one there. 
uh, three geometric means. So I'm going to insert a sub two, a sub three, and a sub four, which means a sub five is negative 256. All right. But I want two positives and one negative. Now, I need to figure out what the common ratio is. Well, again, using the, the formula for the geometric sequence, a sub n equals a sub 1 r to the n minus 1 power. Let's see. Well, I know that a sub 5 is a sub 1, which is 16 times r to the 5 minus 1 power, which is negative 16 times r to the fourth power. So a sub 5 equals negative 16 r to the fourth power. But I also know that a sub 5 equals negative 256. Therefore, negative 16 r to the fourth equals negative 256. So far, so good. So now I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 16. And I get r to the fourth equals, let's see here, 256 divided by 16 is 16. All right, now, a number times itself, times itself, times itself has to equal 16. And we can discover that 2 works. So we conclude that r is 2. However, if r is 2 and we plug it into our a sub 2, 3, and 4, we don't get what they ask for, two positives and two negatives, which brings up what I did at the beginning of class. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 also equals 16. So another option is that r is negative 2. Well, if we take this second option and we use it, we get the results desired. We wanted two positive means and one negative. So a sub 2 would be a sub 1 times the common ratio, which would be a positive 32. a sub 3 is 32 times the common ratio negative 2, which is negative 64. a sub 4 is a sub 3 times the common ratio, which is positive 128. And that times negative 2 gives you negative 256. So here we have three means, two of which are positive and one is negative. I'll bet that answers a lot of mystery questions that you had over the weekend. All right, are we okay with that one? Okay. Yeah. Wait, I have a yeah. question. Oh. Yes. Um, okay, so you said it, Sorry, I got confused. You said it could either be r equals 2 or r equals negative 2. How are we supposed to know which one it is? Because, as I talked about here a minute ago, if I use r as 2, I'd get negative 16 for the first one, negative 32 for the second one, negative 64 for the third one, negative 128 for the fourth one, and that, that would give me three negative means and they said they wanted two positives and one negative. Oh, okay, so you, okay, awesome. So you, so you have to solve the puzzle. You have to think, okay, which one of these would give me what they asked for, all right? Okay, that, that makes sense, thank you. You betcha. Okay, now I am going to, let's see here. Can you see this screen down here that I'm scribbling on? Yes. Yes, okay, I just wanted to make sure that's the one that was up. Give me just a minute here. I'm going to go to a different person's assignments. And this is, let's see here. And, uh, hmm. Hmm. Ah, ah, of course.
And this is from, let go, this is from the chapter review. Okay, so chapter review. And I know you can't see this yet. Uh, number 11 and 12. Okay. So now, I, can you see? I actually have another question on the homework, unless, or are you doing another one right now? I was. Is it from when we just did? Uh, no, sorry. Okay. It was, never okay. mind. Sorry. That's all right. I've got, I've got a, re, a list of requests that people gave. So let me just get through all of those and then we'll open it up for everybody else. Okay. So okay. We, awesome. We'll get to you eventually. I promise. <laughs> okay. No problem. Okay. So now we're going to look at number 11 on web assign, which I'm assuming you can see if I've done this correctly. Yes. Find the common difference of an arithmetic sequence if the first term is negative 529 and the 23rd term is negative 705. Okay. So we know that A sub 1 is negative 529. And we know that A sub 23 is negative 705. Five, and we want to find the common difference, okay? So I'm going to use the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d. Why am I using this formula? Because it's an arithmetic sequence, not a geometric sequence, okay? Well, let's see. I know that a sub 23 equals a sub 1 times 23 minus 1 times d, which means a sub 23 equals negative 529 times 22. Oops, I screwed up there, didn't I? Hang on. I forgot to put a plus sign. I was so used to doing the uh, geometric one. This is going to be 23 minus 1 to the d or times d. So negative 529 plus 22d. So a sub 23 is negative 529 plus 22d. But we also know that a sub 23 is negative 705 from right here. So now I've got negative 529 plus 22d equals negative 705. I have an equation with one variable. I can solve for d. I'm going to add 529 to both sides. And let's see if we take, oh, we take negative 705 plus 529 we get negative 176 if we divide both sides by 22 we get negative 8 so the common ratio is negative 8. all right with that any questions there okay now we're going to go back and look at problem number 12. So here we go here. And number 12, it says, find two arithmetic means between 5 and 22. Enter your answers as a comma separated list. OK. So we've got a sub 1 is 5 two arithmetic means. So I've got to find a sub 2 and a sub 3. And a sub 4 is 22. So we're to find the two arithmetic means. So let's see here. I'm going to use a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d. I know that 
a sub four equals a sub one plus four minus one times d. So a sub four equals five plus three d. I also know that a sub four equals 22. So five plus three d equals 22. Subtract five from both sides and I get 3d equals 17. Okay, divide by three, d equals 17 thirds. Okay, now this is to the person who did this problem. You know who you are, it doesn't matter, but I can see one thing already looking at the, the web assigned answers. Uh, let me, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's see, this is the common difference. So a sub one is five, a sub two is gonna be five plus 17 thirds, okay? Now, we're gonna change this into a single improper fraction. Five is the same thing as five over one. The common denominator here is a three. So I'm gonna multiply five over one by three over three, which is gonna give me 15 thirds plus 17 thirds, which is 32 thirds, okay? A sub three is gonna be 33 thirds plus the common difference, 17 thirds, which is 50 thirds. So A sub two, is 32 thirds and a sub three is 50 thirds. Give me just a second here. I want to look at something to verify what I suspect. Yes, okay. Now, let's go back and look at the web assign. And you, you folks can see the wrong answers and then you can see the correct answers. All right, first of all, there's four answers in here and they just want the two arithmetic means. So WebAssign won't recognize it. Oh, you put the first and the fourth one in there, okay? It's not that clever to figure that out. Second of all, 10.66 and 15.33, if you take 32 over three and you punch it into your calculator, you get 16.6 repeating. But that is not the exact answer as 16.66 is not quite 16.6 repeating. So again, these answers are, are approximate. So you need to leave them in fraction form to get the correct answer. So the person that did number 12, they knew what they were doing to get the right answers. They just put them in the wrong form. Okay, all right. So going on, we've still got a few more to get through here. Uh, I was, I was yes, wondering just on, on that last one, uh, how they had 16.66, what would that be in, or 10.66, what would that be in fraction form? That would be the 32 thirds. Oh. But if you put in 32 thirds, you get 10.66666666. So you couldn't round it off and be correct. It, it didn't say approximate. So. So really the only way you could put in the correct answers would be to use the improper fractions. It might take a mixed number, but word I've gotten back from some of you is that the mixed numbers, they don't like them. Okay, okay so I forgot yeah, how to, um, when you convert it, converting to a fraction would if well, you do it like. I, I never, let, let me go back and show you my work. I didn't have to convert it to a fraction. They were fractions when I first found them. Oh, okay. See what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. All don't right. overuse the calculator. In other words, don't, yes. you know what I'm saying? All right. Um, All right thank you. You bet. So now we're going to go to, uh, let's see. This is also chapter review. Let's see. And you can see my screen down here, right, that I'm scribbling on? Yes? Or, or can you see web assign? We can see your screen. Okay. I just want to make sure you can't see what's in web assign so you don't know 
whose whose uh, problems I'm pulling up here. Okay. Okay. And this is from the chapter review again. And let's see, starting with number 10. And I may be doing very similar problems just with different numbers. So if it looks like, well, yeah, that's really familiar. Yeah, it is, but it'll probably be different numbers. If it ends up being the same numbers, let me know and I won't do the same problem twice. Okay. So now it says the first three terms of the arithmetic sequence are 8, negative 8, and negative 24. Find the 101st term. So we know that a sub 1 is 8, a sub 2 is negative 8, and a sub 3 is negative 24. All right, this is an arithmetic sequence. We're supposed to find a sub 101, and we're going to use the formula a sub n equals a sub 1 plus the quantity n minus 1 times d. Okay, so here we go. Well, we can find the common difference by taking any term in the sequence minus the previous term. So let's take a sub 2 minus a sub 1, which is negative 16. So the common difference is negative 16. In case you're not sure, let's take a sub 3 minus a sub 2. Well, negative 24 minus negative 8 would be negative 24 plus 8 which again is negative 16. So I now know that the common difference is negative 16. So a sub 101 is going to be a sub 1, which is 8, plus n minus 1, which is 101 minus 1, times d, which is negative 16. So that's equal to 8 plus, let's see, 101 minus 1 is 100, times negative 16. Well, 100 times negative, oops, that shouldn't be an equal sign. 100 times negative 16 is negative 1600. Well, negative 1600 plus eight would be negative 1592, I do believe. And so there is the correct answer for the 100 first term. All right. So that was number 10. Any questions there? Okay, we're going to look at number 12. which says find two arithmetic means between 2 and 28. So going back and looking at our screen, we have a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. We need to find two arithmetic means in between. So the first term is 2. The fourth term is 28. We've got two means in the middle. a sub 28 is a sub 1 plus 28 minus 1 times d, which is 2 plus 27 times d. And we also know that a sub 28 equals, oh, excuse me, a sub 4 Okay, okay, hang on, hang on. I have messed up something here. Okay. Two arithmetic means. Ah, I see what I did wrong. My bad. Sorry, I'm feeling like I have to hurry because I'm looking at the time and I know some of you have some questions that 
I haven't gotten to yet, then haste makes waste. A sub four equals A sub one plus four minus one times D, which is two plus three D, but A sub four also equals 28. So two plus three D equals 28. To subtract two, three D equals 26. Divide by three, D equals 26 thirds. So we run into that same issue we had before, and I'll bet that the students' answers were the decimal rounded off equivalent. So A sub two is gonna be two plus 26 thirds, okay? Which is two over one plus 26 thirds. The common denominator is three. So I'm gonna take two over one times three over three, and I'm gonna get six thirds plus 26 thirds, which is 32 thirds. And then the next one is 32 thirds plus 26 thirds, which is what? 58 thirds. So 32 thirds and 58 thirds are the correct answers. Okay. Let's take a look at 14. All right. Are we good to go? Yes? Okay. So 14. Write the first five terms of a geometric sequence whose fourth term is 11 and whose fifth term is 11 halves. The first five terms. So we want a sub 1 a sub two, a sub three, a sub four, a sub five. And we know that the fourth term is 11 and the fifth term is 11 over two. And we're talking geometric, so we're talking a sub n equals a sub one r to the n minus one power. And find the first five terms, okay. Well, I need the common ratio. If I take any term divided by the previous term, I get the common ratio, right? So 11 halves divided by 11 would be 11 halves times one over 11, which would be one half. Okay, now, There's a couple of different ways we can do this. And let's see if you can fit, if you can follow this. Going this direction, I would take each term times the common ratio to get the next term, right? So a sub one times a half would be a sub two. A sub two times a half would be a sub three, et cetera. Everybody okay with that? Yep. So going backwards, we would divide by a half. So for instance, a sub, oops, I've got a sub four written there and that should be a sub five. So a sub five divided by a half would be a sub four, which is 11. A sub four divided by a half would be A sub three. Oh, dividing by the half is the same thing as multiplying by what? Dividing by a half is the same thing as multiplying by what? Two. Isn't it? So what's 22 times two? What's 44 times two? 88. Yeah. Okay. I, you know what I'm gonna do because we're running out of time. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna ask for questions. I didn't get through all the ones that people asked for. If, if uh, I will contact them and see if they still have questions, but I, I wanna give 
some of you that didn't email me questions ahead of time a chance to look at anything. I also want to mention this, okay? Tomorrow is the test, okay? There's not going to be a Zoom meeting at 1030, so if you come looking, you'll be alone unless someone else comes looking too, but tomorrow is when you take your test. Actually, you can take it any time you want up until 1159 tomorrow night, but once you start the test, you've only got 90 minutes to finish it. So don't start it in the middle of, you know, you've got other things that are gonna happen. You wanna have 90 minutes where nothing's gonna distract you. And again, be sure to reread what I sent you about testing policy. All that you should be able to have with you is your calculator and uh, those two formulas written down on a piece of paper. Just write out your work on, pen, or on paper, put it into WebAssign, get through the whole test, go back, and if there's ones that you missed, and you want to submit your work in hopes that you'll get some partial credit, email those to me after you've done, done with your test. Okay, having said all that, there were some questions. Could you go over number 13 for 14.3? Um, uh, okay, so 14.3. Do you want me to look at a specific problem? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it matters that much, but. Okay, so then I will just, so let me get that so you can't see that. Okay, so we're talking 14.3. So I'll just pick somebody's 14.3. And which one? Uh, number 13. 13, okay. So, it says find the geometric mean between 4 and 324. Is that similar to yours? Yes. Okay, so A sub 1 is 4. I need to find A sub 2 and a sub three is 324. I'm gonna use a sub n equals a sub one times r to the n minus one power, okay? So, I know that a sub three equals a sub one times r to the three minus one power, which means a sub three equals four r squared, okay? I also know that a sub three equals 324. Therefore, four r squared equals 324. Divide both sides by four, and r squared equals, let's see if we take 324 divided by four, we get 81. Well, what times what is 81? Nine times nine. Is there any other possibility? Uh, Negative nine. Oh, okay. But now let's go back and see what it says. It says find the geometric mean between them. Okay, if it doesn't specify then I believe they want the positive one. So in this case, we're gonna use the positive nine. So four times nine is 36. 36 times nine is gonna be 324. So your answer is uh, 36. Okay with that? Yeah, I think so, thank you. All righty, anybody else? Um, I've actually been kind of struggling with a, um, a question on the review. Uh -huh. Um, it's number 12 and it's, um, find two arithmetic means between eight and 31. I don't know why my brain just isn't, it's just not doing it. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Say it again. Find what? Two arithmetic means between 8 and 31.
Okay, so we've got a total of four numbers because we have two, we've got the first term, two in the middle, and the fourth term, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so a sub four is a sub one plus four minus one times d. Okay. A sub four is eight plus three d. A sub four is also 31. So eight plus three D is 31. All right? Okay. Subtract eight. Three D equals what, 23? Okay, yeah, yeah. Divide by three. D equals 23 thirds. So A sub one is eight. A sub two is eight plus 23 thirds. But 8 over 1 multiplied by 3 over 3 is going to be 24 thirds plus 23 thirds, which is 47 thirds. And again, don't write it as a decimal approximation. It's got to be a fraction, right? Uh huh, 47 thirds. A sub 3 is 47 thirds plus 23 thirds, which is 70 thirds. So 47 thirds and 70 thirds should be your two numbers. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. You bet. Anybody else? We still got a couple of minutes. I had one question. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the problem, but there were a few when it would be like a sub one, a sub two, and it would be in, um, it would be in order until, and then there's say up to four, and then there's like a sub seven. Uh-huh. Um, so how do you find out like at the very beginning what the common ratio is? Like if you only have two numbers, like say the first and the last. Okay. So there's a common theme. I'm, I'm just going to make up some numbers and that aren't necessarily going to fit. So I'm not going to finish the problem, but I'm just going to try and answer your question. So maybe it says a sub one is five and a sub four is 200 or something like that. Okay. All right. And then we're supposed to find a sub seven. Is that, is that the kind of deal? Yes. All right. So what you've got is using this formula, you could find this in two different ways. You could say a sub four is a sub one times r to the four minus one power. Do you see where I got that? Mm -hmm. Kind of. Okay, so a sub one was right here. N is four, so that's where I got that. So now simplifying a sub four is five r to the third power. You see that, Roger? Oh, um, yes. But I also know that a sub four is 200. Okay. So that means this equals that. Five r cubed equals 200. I can divide both sides by five and r cubed equals 40. And as I said, I made these numbers up, so this isn't gonna be nice. We're not gonna finish this, but then from there I could find r. Okay. Okay. And then I could go back and find a sub seven or whatever by using this original formula now that I know what R is. So there was a common theme there where we, we used one of the terms that wasn't the first term. If we know the first term and one other term, whether it's arithmetic or geometric, we can take the, the main formula and find a sub four or a sub whatever, two different ways, form an equation, and that'll get us to be able to find the common ratio or in the case of uh, arithmetic sequences, the common difference. So if you go back and look through all those problems I've done, there's that common theme of what's going on there.
All right. So uh, that's it for today for this morning's meeting. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording just to remind.